guys welcome back to my channel and if you are new to my channel hello my name is Gabby now if you are a long time subscriber of mine I'm talking like first 300 subscribers on my channel you might remember that I did this video before but I erased it over literally the dumbest reason ever not because it was like controversial or anything but because my eyelash was like half falling off in the video and it bugged the shit out of me. So I erased the video and I wasn't sure if I was going to do it again, but I've been getting requests lately to do this story on my channel. So I figured I'd just do that for you guys today. It is a really interesting story and if you enjoy tales of supposed cursed objects and the weird events connected to them, you're definitely going to like this story. So let's just get into it. If you don't know who Rudolph Valentino is, he was a very famous actor from the early 1920s. I was trying to think of something in today's time that people who might not be that familiar with actors and actresses from long ago might know his name from. And if you are a fan of American Horror Story, Finn Whitrock actually portrayed him in American Horror Story Hotel. And I'm a big fan of Rudolph Valentino and I thought he did an absolutely amazing job at portraying him. Rudolph Valentino was an Italian-born American actor born on May 6th, 1895. He was known as the Great Lover or the Latin Lover. He was probably the first well-known heartthrob of the screen. He was best known for his roles in such films as The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, Blood and Sand, The Sheik, and Beyond the Rocks. In 1920, Rudolph Valentino was basically entering the height of his career. And in that year, he bought a tiger's eye ring. When Valentino purchased this ring, he was told by the seller that it was indeed cursed. But he was captivated by it and bought it anyway. When Valentino showed the ring to his friend Cha Mank, a songwriter and a supposed psychic, Cha Mank said that as soon as he saw the ring, a vision of Valentino dead flashed in his head and he advised Valentino to get rid of the ring, and Valentino didn't. In 1926, Valentino went on tour to promote his movie, The Son of the Sheik. On August 15, 1926, while on tour, Valentino fainted in his New York City apartment, and he was rushed to the nearest hospital. They discovered that he had a perforated ulcer that required emergency surgery. After the surgery, Valentino developed a series of complications and slipped into a coma. The great lover passed away on August 23rd, 1926. Of course, none of us were alive at the time, but Rudolph Valentino's death caused mass hysteria. There were over a hundred thousand people who showed up to his funeral. There had been deaths before Rudolph Valentino's in Hollywood, but as of 1926, he was the biggest star that Hollywood ever had pass away. And as time went on, more and more people came to believe that the ring that he purchased in 1920 may be cursed and it may have been what caused his untimely passing. The reason why is because he was not the only one affected by this so-called cursed ring. After Valentino's death, his former fiance, Pola Negri, had the ring and she became gravely ill. By the time she recovered, talkies had taken over the screen and she just did not have the voice for it, so her career was basically over. Pola gave it to a friend of hers, an actor named Russ Colombo, who she thought bared a striking resemblance to Rudolph. He wore the ring and not long after was in a freak shooting accident and died. After Russ's death, Russ's cousin passed the ring on to Russ's best friend, an entertainer named Joe Casino. Joe Casino heard about this supposed curse and he didn't wear the ring for many years. I guess he sort of kind of forgot about it and he started wearing it and within a week of wearing it, he was killed in a hit and run accident. Joe left it to his brother, Del Casino, and when Del Casino had it, it was taken by a robber named James Willis. Before James even got out of the house with the ring, he was shot dead by police. A man named Jack Dunn also had the ring, but he only had it for a two week period. And within that two weeks, he was diagnosed and killed by a rare blood disease. 
Oh, did you think we were done? No, there's, there's more. The ring was then put into a bank vault where it was thought to be safe from harming anyone else. A year later though, a gang robbed the bank, stealing over $200,000 from the vault where the ring was. In that robbery, two of the gang members were killed, a few passerbys were injured, and the head of the gang, a man named Alfred Hahn, was sentenced to life in prison. During Hahn's trial, he told the court, if I had known what was in the vault, I would have picked another vault. The exact whereabouts of this ring have been unknown since the early 1960s. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that thing looks cursed, like, just saying. But there's even more spooky aspects to this story. It is also said that Real Valentino's spirit may not be at rest and possibly wandering around Hollywood, still searching for his ring. There have been tons of reports of people supposedly seeing the ghost of Rudolph Valentino in many different locations all around Southern California. His spirit does more traveling than I do. It is said that he haunts his old home, an estate called Falcon Lair. People have claimed to have seen his spirit looking out the second story window at them. Others have reported seeing him at Studio 5 at Paramount Studios the Santa Maria Inn, the Knickerbocker Hotel. It is also said that Valentino is one of the spirits that haunts the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, where he was laid to rest all those years ago. His ex-wife, Natasha Rambova, claimed that she kept in contact with him years after his death through seances. There's also reports of people seeing his dog, Kabar, around the LA Pet Cemetery where he was buried. Kabar passed away six months after Valentino, and many think it was due to a broken heart. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. It's definitely a very strange and interesting legend of old Hollywood, and my eyelash wasn't half falling off in this video. I blamed it on the curse, not my lack of makeup skills. As always, there will be tons of links down in the description for you to check out if you are interested in learning more about what I talked about in today's video. Also, don't forget to leave any recommendations you have for video ideas down in the comments below. I read every single comment and don't forget to like and subscribe if you are not already and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!